just like to go through a couple of techniques on the way I keep my knives sharp. It is imperative that we keep our knives sharp. It's much easier to work on boning out or slicing meat. But the major thing is that majority of cuts and wounds caused by butcher's knives or chef's knives are basically because of their blunt. And the reason for that is that the cutting edge is not sharp and we're putting more pressure on our working action with that knife and the more pressure the tendency to slip and uh, accidents occur. I've got two knives here which are, are very typical for the butcher or preparing of meat. The shorter knife, the boning knife and the larger knife, the steak knife. And they are set there for a reason. The boning knife is for slicing small amounts but mainly taking the bones. The larger one is a steak knife and making larger cuts. And it's important we use the right knives for the right job. Now for stealing, there is a, a selection of steels on the market. I tend to use the flat steel and I tend to use the typical traditional action of slicing down either side carefully. What I was always taught, and I believe it's probably one of the best ways of doing it, is that I don't hold the steel like that with my thumb around the steel. The reason for that is that if I'm sharpening the large knife and I slice off, in this occasion I'm wearing the chainmail glove. But if I'm not wearing that glove, and I hold the steel, as I've just shown, with my thumb wrapped around one side and my fingers the other, if I slip off that steel, I'm gonna hit the most softest part of my hand and cause the most damage there is. If I hold it in a grip fashion with my thumb around the steel, it may take a little bit of getting used to to start with, but at the last resort, if there is to be a slight accident, I only nick a little bit, but don't do major damage up the hand. But hopefully, if you do the job correctly, you should not be cutting anywhere. So it's sliding the blade gently down each side carefully. This isn't a sharpener, this is just to hone the edge. If you can't get a cutting edge on it, the knife needs to be put on a stone to bring it back to that edge before we hone it back. Now that is the action. You can speed up if you wish, as long as you're keeping that together. Full length of the blade. So it's a curving sweep, one side of the steel and the other. And that should give us a nice honed edge. When it comes to the bigger knife, it's the same process, keeping the edge either side of that steel in a nice gentle sweep. But for safety reasons, I would tend, because of the large knife, to put my steel down on the table I've put a little bit of tissue or cloth to stop it slipping and I will draw my knife gently down each side of the steel and because of that full length of blade the only way it's going is onto the table and not into your hand. So it's gently running your knife down the side of that steel equally on both sides to give you that better edge. and. Also, it's just as easy with a smaller knife, which means you're actually keeping your hand away from the cutting edge of the knife at all times. Once I sharpened my knives, it's then an action that I repeat on a regular basis. I will always sharpen my knife just before starting and regularly throughout the process of whatever I'm working on. Even if I'm only taking out one or two small bones, 
I will keep that knife honed regularly. I don't want to be working half a day before sharpening the knife. As I said at the beginning, if the edge is not sharp, you put more pressure in that action and that's when accidents occur.